Hey, good evening, everyone. So the day for a lot of you has come. It is the, finally the day where I actually release the dividend growth tracker portfolio thing workbook that I've been meaning to work on and, and allow you guys to download. So I'm pretty excited about it. I finally simplified it a little bit um, and eliminated some of the uh, proprietary stuff like personal information. Um, for you guys to, to really download. And there's also some extras in here. It's not necessarily just dividend tracking, but also some dividend growth things as well, if you're into that. Uh, and I'll get to that hopefully in this video. But um, basically within this first tab here, basically this introduction um, and kind of will eventually put in an instructional video, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, and it kind of walks through the tabs and maybe some of the information you need per tab. So, for instance, for the portfolio, this is, allows you to keep track of your investments, cost basis, dividend yield, you don't cost, etc. And you kind of have a key um, for what colors are being used in that tab. So anything that's blue is basically a calculation. Anything that's yellow, you're going to have to change pretty often. And anything that's red, you might have to change every time you buy more shares or what have you. Um, I've simplified this. This is basically only one account now, whereas I have five or six accounts. Um, so this may or may not work for you um, immediately, but you can do some tweaking. Hopefully you can get your eye into the spreadsheet now that you own it um, and make any adjustments for you. Um, so basically, like I said, the blues, you don't really have to change much to calculations. Uh, and the yellows are what you're mostly going to have to focus on. But you're going to focus mostly on columns B through O. And there are some other things in here if you want to track them, but they don't necessarily pertain or correlate to any of the other um, tabs within the workbook. Mostly what's uh, within the workbook is everything from B to O. Um, and you have everything between how many shares you have now, what your cost basis was, what your price per share is, what... Um, your total cost basis for the entire investment is, what your current value is, return, and your annual payout on a forward basis. Um, one of the things that I want to show you guys is how you can set up your dividend tracker. Uh, and I'll get to this in quite a second here. But I think the most important thing that you guys want to be tracking is the payout per share. And so I have a, a example here. Uh, looking specifically at Verizon and um, if you look at Verizon here uh, excuse me just getting rid of some of this crap coming onto the screen you look and you see Verizon has a two dollar and forty one cent um, annualized payout and so that would basically be taken from here and go back into this spreadsheet and go find say Verizon which I actually own at the moment. And you can see um, four payments of 60 cents um, basically uh, every quarter. Uh, and this is the most important part. If you scroll way down here, um, and this is the main reason why I wanted you to use this spreadsheet, is you'll see uh, the history of Verizon dividend payments. So you'll see the payment amount when it was declared, the record date, the actual pay date is probably the most important part of this. And so what you'll see is it pays in February, May, um, August, as well as November. And the reason why this is important is because when you actually go to track your dividends, what you'll see is you have um, dividends coming in February, May, August, and November. Uh, and the reason why this is important is because this yellow is completed dividends. But these blues are set up so that way you can kind of track your performance. So not every stock is going to be paying you in the same month. Some of them will pay you monthly. Some of them will pay you semi-annually. Some of them will pay you annually. Um, some of them will pay special dividends. Some of them won't pay dividends at all. So it all depends on what you're investing in and understanding, looking at, say, Abby and setting it up um, in the course of when you think it's going to pay you. In the case of Verizon, we know that um, we set it up. So basically, we go back and count it to a portfolio 047. Look for Verizon portfolio uh, 047 here. Um, and we know that it's going to pay us four times a year. So then we would divide this total annualized payout by four. 
to get us a, a payout in November of about $65. And you can see, because we've re been reinvesting dividends, uh, that the actual um, value is going to be a little bit more than what we received in August. And every time you actually get the dividend payment, um, you would either see it in your account or what have you, um, you would just, like I did for this one, just hard code over it. I would just type in 64.35, hit enter, and then you no longer have the formula in there. So same thing with Stag Industrial. When I get paid on Wednesday um, or the Thursday, the 15th, I'll hard code this in instead of it being the formula to go look for what the annualized payout is. It'll uh, it'll increase. And the nice thing about this is if you have dividend reinvestment on, um, hopefully uh, it will update your your current shares now. Um, so, for instance, this 123 shares that I have in Stagnant Industrial might go up to 123.6 shares just because I uh, I get paid monthly and um, on a monthly basis I get about another half share. So. Um, that's something that's kind of cool, and this actually shows you this um, through the shares per payout, meaning for the dividend reinvestment. You can see that some of them are set up for monthly, uh, like my Stag Industrial. Some of them are set up for, for quarterly, like my Altria Group and, and my AbV and my Kinder Morgan. So just keep in mind that some of these are set up for monthly, some of them are set up for quarterly, and that you might need to adjust that um, appropriately. So that's really how you get um, the dividend tracker kind of set up. And if you do set it up appropriately, um, it will uh, kind of carry over into 2020 or so. Because uh, if you think about it, um, 2020 is going to be four quarters of whatever you have invested at the moment. Um, keep in mind that if you were to buy another stock, uh, you would have to manually input uh, into both the 2019 and 2020 dividend trackers. Um, so just keep that part in mind. Um, same thing with the monthly tracker. If you were to put, say, 2020 and 2021 in here, it's not going to automatically go to anything. But where these values kind of come in is looking specifically at, say, August 2019. Um, this is just a, a formula that tracks back to... August of 2019, the 641 correlates to the 641 you just saw on the previous sheet. So you see 641.68. If you were to go over to here, you see 642. If I were to increase the decimal points, you see 641.68. So this is basically just summing up the entire uh, month of August for you. And you also see that the entire month of August for 2020 is also tracked. So if you were to go back to this dividend tracker and go to August 2020, you see the 643.39. Um, nothing too crazy. I did delete my old values. I used to have back to 2013. That wasn't obviously pertinent to you because if you're just starting a portfolio, you obviously don't have anything back to 2013. But you could easily go back and add it in if you have uh, any information on it. This uh, talks about your dividends per month and um, basically just looking at uh, these aren't very important because this is just my age going throughout time um, in column A here. But for I, uh, IBA, this is stands for individual brokerage account, and it's talking about the dividends that you're expecting. And this is, once again, going back to your dividend tracker, um, looking at how much you're going to be making per month. Um, this is basically looking directly at uh, how much you're making on an annualized basis divided by 12, so on a monthly basis. And this is just the increase year over year. Um, and this is basically just accounting for what the percentage changes year over year. Here's where you can kind of set up your goals. So you can see um, if you think you're going to increase it about 10% per year, this is how it would show up. Uh, if you think you're going to increase it about 30% per year, that's when you can, you know, just manually input whatever you want. Um, and that is really how you would be able to make the goals. Uh, at the moment, I kind of just set it up for 10% uh, because I don't know how aggressively you're investing. Uh, and you obviously can set up your 2020 goal to be whatever you want. If you want this to, to actually be, whoops, if you actually want this to be, um, let's say your 2020 goal to be 7,000, you can set it up like that and immediately it'll build 20% off of that or 10% year over year off of that. Um, so that is how that works. 
and that also corresponds to this on a yearly graphic. Uh, this is on a monthly basis. This is on a yearly basis. So you can kind of understand um, if you were to increase 10% per year for the next seven years where you would get to. Uh, and this is another cool little thing. So this is um, allocating everything by sector. Uh, feel free to change the names of this, but what it basically is doing is looking for consumer staples in your portfolio section. So you're looking specifically at these columns in the portfolio. So if you go to portfolio, you'll see that column P has all the different uh, names in here. So one thing to keep in mind is if you just type in financial, it's not going to show up in this spreadsheet. So just make sure that what you type in is appropriate. You'll see it's looking for financials. So if you type financial, it's not going to work. Feel free to change that value to be whatever you want it to be. But at the same time, this is just how it's set up at the moment. Um, so if you want to change it to say financial instead of financials, just make sure you change you know everything appropriately. Uh, this is going to split it up into the percent percentage of the portfolio that it's actually in terms of value, and it's also going to do it for actual income also. And um, what's important is I got rid of some of the 401k stuff because you might not necessarily have a 401k or you're tracking your 401k, but you also have uh, this income by sector, and this is supposed to be zero. If it's not zero, there's something messed up uh, in the formula somewhere, or you um, have something messed up that's not necessarily reading um, all of your um, sectors appropriately or what have you. Uh, this is meant to look at your current yield and also your yield on costs. And then everything down here is meant to be reading what your portfolio is um, on a uh, you know total stock percentage. So if you just want to look at what your total stock portfolio looks like or how much of one position is, you know, let's let's say how much your Wells Fargo position is. You can kind of see that going to Wells Fargo, it's about eight or nine percent of your total portfolio. And that's really it for actually looking at and graphing the actual portfolio itself. Like I said, um, it's really for available for you to download now. Um, where you can download it, uh, I'll leave it a link in this description down below. Um, I basically set up a Shopify store for you guys uh, so that you can come and download it. Um, it's basically pretty simple. It's just mapmoney.myshopify.com. It's available for relatively cheap, $2.50. And I uh, acknowledge that some of you guys might be pretty upset that I'm charging for it, but um, so many people ask for it. And uh, to be honest, it's taken five or six years to get my portfolio spreadsheet up to where I believe that it's something very valuable. Um, every year I would add something different um, to the fact that this is something I've added probably within the last 12 months, 18 months, and I'm really proud of this thing. It took quite a bit of time, um, maybe a day or, or two days, um, not full working time, but just to think about it and conceptualize to show you how you or to organize it how I wanted it. Um, anyway, there are some other little goodies in here. If you're into Fibonacci sequences and stuff like that, um, you know, you can you could easily do that. That's something that maybe we can talk about on a different day in a different video. But there's also little drip uh, things here. You can kind of look at what how many shares you own, the dividend yield and the dividend growth. And you can kind of forecast um, out in time, you know, how many shares you might get or what have you. Um, if this is something that what you're looking at um, in terms of, you know, how much of a total return you might get or your annualized return or how your dividends might grow from one investment. Um, and of course, there's a, some, some assumptions like the dividend, uh, the price of the stock doesn't grow or anything like that. But um, anyway, you can do this on a semi annual basis, monthly basis, quarterly basis, what have you. This is all for you to try to map anything. And if there are any questions, feel free to write me down in comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to provide. Um, if you haven't, already please subscribe and I will talk to you guys on another video. Don't forget to stop by mattmoney.myshopify.com so you can download the spreadsheet. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great night.